Well, good morning to you. Welcome to this August 15th pre-recorded worship. We'll be continuing our pre-recorded worship through Labor Day. So I'm delighted you are here. And we'll talk more about how you can communicate with us a little bit later. Right now, to get us in the right mind and heart for worship, Maestro Bob will begin. <clears throat> And so welcome to this worship. Hear the words of the Lord. Ask, it will be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door will be opened for you. And so this day we ask that God's Spirit be upon us as we worship. Where you said 
Thank God for that. Jesus is our friend. Good thing, because we haven't been the best friends to the Lord Jesus. Oh, we want to, but we fail. Fortunately, fortunately, he is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. But it does us good to confess. Be reminded that self-righteousness isn't something we ought to be a part of. And a reminder of the joy of forgiveness. So I invite you to pray with me our prayer of confession. O oh, Holy One, we call to you and name you as eternal, ever-present, boundless in love. If there are times, O oh God, when we fail to recognize you in the dailiness of our lives, sometimes shame clenches tightly around our hearts. We hide our true feelings. Sometimes fear makes us small and we miss the chance to speak from our strength. Sometimes doubt invades our hopefulness and we degrade our own wisdom. Holy God, in the daily round from sunrise to sunset, remind us again of your holy presence hovering near us and in us. Free us from shame and self-doubt. Help us to see you in the moment-by-moment -moment possibilities, to live honestly, to act courageously, to speak from our wisdom. I invite you to take 30 seconds of silence with me as we have our own private confession. Hear the words of St. Paul. God the Father was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting sins against the world. No, when we are, when we are in Christ, we are new people all together. The past is over, the past is gone. Let us celebrate that by living lives which give God honor and glory. What lives are those? Lives that obey the Lord Jesus, who told us all the law, all the prophets' writings, are summarized in two commandments. Love the Lord your God with your whole being, body, mind, spirit. Love your neighbor that you love yourself. So when we live those lives, we will fulfill everything in the law, everything proclaimed by the prophets. Let's live in such a way, now and forever.
We continue our walk through the Psalms for these summer worships. We're up to Psalm 11. Hear the words of the Lord. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to me, flee like a bird to the mountains? For look, the wicked bend the bow. They sit in their arrow into the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in the heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his gaze examines humankind. The Lord tests the righteous and the wicked. His soul hates the lover of violence. On the wicked he will rain coals of fire and sulfur. A scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. The Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright shall be whole. Our second reading from Exodus chapter 16. You remember we've been talking about Moses all summer. Of course, you remember, remember last week we talked about the Exodus. Our story continues. The whole congregation of Israelites set out from Elam. Israel came to the wilderness of sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt, the whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, you brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. The Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day, the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I'll test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. 
On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he's heard your complaining against the Lord. What are we that you complain against us? Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and you're filled with bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him. What are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard you complain. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat. In the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. In the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? But they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs. An omer to a person according to the number of persons, all provided for those in their own tents. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our hymn is, Take My Life and Let It Let us join together in a prayer for illumination. Most high God, everlasting Lord, mighty and lifted up, grant to us your Holy Spirit, that in these words of Holy Scripture our hearts might be lifted up, our minds set on heavenly realities, 
that contemplating the reign of our ascended Lord, we might long to be with him, enter into the joy of his eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Moses walked with God, but he always seemed to be in Danger. Now, we've talked about that for how many weeks now? It's 10 weeks prior to this. How, of course, he was under the death sentence as an infant. How Pharaoh was hunting him. We talked about the tensions between he and Pharaoh when he returned and there were 10 plagues. You, of course, remember how Pharaoh made things worse on the Hebrew slaves. He was having a stubborn contest with Moses and with God. And how many of those Hebrew slaves were saying, Moses, leave us alone. Our lives weren't as bad as this before you arrived. Moses, don't rock the boat. We're the ones getting the heat. But of course, after the plagues, the people of Israel were allowed to go, and they even plundered the Egyptians. How many pounds of gold did they haul away from Egypt? And the people saw God's power in the parting of the Red Sea, and the opposite of the morning of the sea, the coming back together of the sea with the Egyptian army in it. You'd think by now the Hebrew slaves now freed would be too afraid to complain. Do you really want to complain about a God who has the power to send Ten plagues to bring the king of Egypt. That was the superpower of this era. Egypt had a huge army. Moses and the staff, with God's miracles, brought that superpower to its knees. If you're one of the people of Israel, do you really want to complain about God? Do you really want to complain about Moses? You think that you might think twice about that. And after the whole army of the Pharaoh was drowned in the Exodus experience, you might just think that you would think twice before griping, but no, here they are. They're out in the wilderness. Now, I'm not trying to minimize what it must be like to be walking through a desert in that hot sun, living in tents. It's not a job I want. My son-in-law told me enough stories about his deployment to Africa that I'm very grateful I was not running through the deserts in Africa. Not fun. Here they are. Walking now away from the Red Sea, going roughly in a northwesterly direction, and they're griping, they're saying, you know, we were better off as slaves. Really? Someone really wants to go back to slavery? Seriously? Can you imagine? Actually, yes, I can. I've seen a number of people who literally lived in a kind of slavery in domestic violence. You finally get them out, you get them settled, and they start having regrets. They start saying, maybe I should have gone back. 
maybe I should have stayed there. For many people, as horrible as life can be, the known is less scary than the unknown. And these free slaves, these people of Israel, aren't really sure what's going on ahead of them. They know what was behind. They survived it. Can they trust the future? Or do they fear it? And do they wonder where their next meal is coming from? I can certainly understand that one. This is the days before canned goods, the days before MREs. No, you lived day to day. The food you got today was for today. What about tomorrow? You know, I've always had a chuckle about canned goods, about preserved foods, about things you can keep on your shelf for a very long time. The greatest collector of canned goods I ever met was my grandmother. She had learned on the farm how to do canning with ball jars. And she did fruit, she did vegetables, she made a whole ritual of it every year. Kind of nice in the middle of winter. We got those nice ball jar canned peaches. It's a nice Christmas treat. Wasn't bad. But she kept doing it for decades and decades. She filled the fruit cellar in Jersey City with all of these ball jars of canned fruits. I asked her why, and she told me I wasn't sure I wanted to know. You see, Castro wanted to take over the United States. And the first place he was coming was Jersey City. And of course, Granny knew that his first wave of his army had already arrived. You know, those Puerto Ricans, who of course spoke Spanish, therefore they were from Fidel Castro in Cuba, she made sure that her, her fruit cellar was good and stocked with ball jars of food. She was planning to live there when the Puerto Rican Cubans took over until our boys drove them back. I'm not kidding. She actually told me this. She didn't know at that time there were ethnic tensions between Puerto Ricans and Cubans. But I illustrate that to talk about how we keep food for a long time. For most of us, food supply is not precarious. Yeah, freezers are nice, but most of us have lost an awful lot of food in freezers. Whenever there's a blackout in the summer or there's a hurricane, these people knew nothing of ball jars. These people had no refrigeration. No, their food was day to day. It's not an unrealistic fear that they have. It's not unrealistic for them to be asking the question, where is our next meal coming from? I think they crossed the line when I start complaining about Moses and Aaron, that's their way of complaining about God without mentioning God. You'd think by now, with the miracles God has shown, that they would walk with confidence, that they would not worry, they wouldn't fret about it. You'd think they would know somehow God is working this but they didn't seem to remember the lesson from the past days God will provide. Don't worry about it. 
You know, it's kind of nice. We can all feel self-righteous criticizing these folks. Except for one thing. I'm not sure we've learned that lesson. Don't we still worry? Will we have enough of this? Will we have enough of that? Will we have enough of something else? We haven't learned a lesson from our whole lives to trust God. We haven't learned the Bible stories that we have studied for years. That God is a God who can be trusted. No! I'm always worried. Will we have enough? Will God really provide for us? You know what? The answer is yes. If we are trusting enough to let go of our concerns. Ever hear of Dave Ramsey? I hope you have. If not, please do a search. Dave Ramsey is a professed Christian. He's also a financial planner. He does. He does radio shows. You can buy his 20 tips for getting out of debt, and prospering, all this kind of stuff. I only know him for the radio. No, I don't need to buy his program. He starts out, though, with two things. If someone is in financial difficulty, his first question is, do you trust God? Well, if your answer is yes, and in most cases it is, he said, then why did you charge things on a credit card? Didn't you believe that you and God could save enough money to buy something in cash? You didn't believe that at the right time you'd get that product? You had to buy it now when it's on sale? You had to charge it on a credit card? That's not living day to day. The Israelites, they are living day to day with their quail and manna. Have we learned that? The second thing he asks is, are you tithing to the church? That's the one that gets people crazy. Tithing, I can't afford to do that. And his response is, can you afford to not do that? When you tithe, it's a good lesson. You've got more than you need. You've got enough. And you're pledging to God that you do trust that you will indeed have enough for tomorrow like you do today. And essentially, those are Dave Ramsey's principles. No debt, live in cash, day to day, like the Israelites did. 10% goes to God. It's a good remembrance. You really don't need everything that you look you can give away. That's the lesson that we struggle with today. That's a lesson that the Israelites struggled with. Do we really believe? Do we really believe that God will give us each day our daily bread? Do we believe that God will give us what we need each day? And do we believe that that will happen each and every day? The Israelites learned this the hard way. If you heard the regulation here, you only gather enough manna for one day, except on Friday you gather enough for two days. Well, of course, Saturday is Sabbath. 
They weren't going to be out gathering this on Sabbath. No. What would have happened if they had gathered for more than the one day? I can tell you a story about that. When we were in Spain back in the 70s, well, what's a nice way to put this? Sanitation supplies, sanitation facilities weren't as good in some of the parts of Spain we went to as they are here. Neither was the water infrastructure. And our intestinal systems always didn't quite link up with the water over there. Yeah, we spent a lot of time in disposed but one of our guides, he'd seen this before, he brought us to a goat cheese shop. And he showed us the cheese, which he said helped out most Americans who had this problem. Something in this type of cheese did a nice job balancing the intestinal systems of and he told us, just buy enough for one day. Come back tomorrow and buy enough for that day. Well, most of us did just that. But a few people who were very, very money conscious looked at the unit pricing and determined, get a nice big wedge of this stuff you don't have to come back every day, and it's cheaper. Not in that heat. In a little hotel room, without a refrigerator, you don't want to know what this stuff smelled like in 12 hours. This one guy had got like a pound of it. The whole hall reeked from this guy's room. We were lucky, though. We were taking a train out the next day to another location. Some things you don't want to plan ahead on. Some things you want to do day to day. And miraculously, these former slaves were now being cared for by God. You know, as much as it sounds crazy to live off wild quail and to scoop up this manna, whatever in the world it really was, I don't know, I can't picture it. What else would a former slave do? Were these slaves capable of being farmers yet? Were they capable of running their own industries yet? For generations, they were slaves, being told what to do. They were building bricks for the Pharaoh cities. They were given the supplies and told to work. And of course, they were given the food they needed each day, too. They didn't have a plan ahead. No. All they knew was what they needed each day at work at home. And so it is. God is giving them this each and every day. Because that's how they thought. That's the only way for an ex-slave to think. No, it would take a new generation to actually occupy the promised land. A generation that didn't remember. Didn't remember being told what to do every single day. But maybe, even though we've never been ex-slaves, never been slaves, fortunately, maybe it's up to us to learn a little bit from these folks. Live day to day. No debt. Give. Give a tithe to God. Don't think too far ahead, but don't look too far in the past. You know what? It works. It really does work. It 
relieves economic stress. It gives us the peace. It helps us trust God. Can't think of much better than that. We, like these ex-slaves, are leaving some bad stuff behind. Oh, we all had some sorrow in this time of COVID. We're leaving all that. And you know, the future isn't exactly clear, but the less we depend on ourselves, the more we trust God, the less complaining we do. Well, the better things will go for us. They worked for the slaves of Israel. Well, it'll work for us. Let's try it out. To God be the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join with me on the Lord's Day 11, Heidelberg Catechism. The question is, why is the Son of God called Jesus, meaning Savior? The answer, because he saves us from our sins. Salvation cannot be found in anyone else. It is futile to look for any salvation elsewhere. Question, do those who look for their salvation and security in saints, in themselves or elsewhere, really believe in the only Savior, Jesus? Answer, no. Although they boast of being his, by their deeds they deny the only Savior and deliverer, Jesus. Either Jesus is not a perfect Savior, or those who in true faith accept the Savior have in him all they need for their salvation. Facebook 
or at 2 p.m. on our YouTube channel. Those stories, again, are all about Moses, and they will continue through day. So please, prayerfully consider now how much God is calling you to contribute to this ministry. While you pray about that, our illustrious Mary will be singing
As I mentioned before, if you have additions to our prayer list, please email them to the church office. They will be circulated on our email list, and those folks will be grateful. Until then, let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for this time together. We thank you for the blessing of technology which lets this worship happen even, even with vacations and traveling. We pray your blessing on everyone who's online now and those people who will hear, who will see this worship in the future. As imperfect as we are doing this, use us anyway. Make us catalysts to grow faith in those people that you have called by your spirit for future glory. We pray you'll teach us the lesson the Israelites learned. May we trust you each and every day. May we live avoiding racking up debt. May we never forget to tithe to that we may live responsible lives with the ability to have everything we need, with the ability to help those who need help. We pray your blessing on all those listening right now. Give everyone the blessing they need each day. Flood them with your spirit. Where there's illness, bring health, and where there's anxiety, bring peace. Where there is ignorance, bring wisdom. That all of us might improve and become better disciples. We live in a world where not everything is just. Where not everyone strives for righteousness. So we pray your spirit upon all of us in power. May we be your seekers of justice, battlers for righteousness. May everyone who sees us know we are yours. May they see our good works, and may they in turn give you glory. Bless all of us who travel. Keep us safe this summer, that we might be reunited this September and celebrate our homecoming. Until that day, O oh Lord, bless us and keep us. We pray in Jesus' own name, remembering what he told us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn, A Charge to Keep.
Well, we thank you for joining us. We pray you were blessed by being with us as much as I feel blessed to know you were here. Live day to day. Trust the Lord. He will provide. Fight for his cause each and every day without complaining. Be blessed in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.